Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reorganizing my bookshelves. I am so excited to be doing this. I have been wanting to make this change for a while now. As much as I love my current setup, which is, you know, just my bookshelves organized by color, I'm really wanting to switch up how I am doing things. One of my biggest goals for this year is to read more of my own TBR. And as my bookshelves stand currently, I am having a really hard time figuring out what books I've read and what books I haven't. And I feel like it might be nice to have one section of my bookshelves devoted to my physical TBR. So that's kind of what I am aiming to do in this video just take all of my books off my shelves, maybe give them a good wipe down because it's been a while, honestly. I think I'm actually going to not disassemble my TBR cart so much as just not have a TBR cart in here. I don't know. I feel like that is just not something that's working for me anymore. I'm going to get it out of here. My door will actually be able to fully open in this office now, which would be super awesome. Uh, and then I'm going to figure out how exactly I'm going to put them back on the shelves. I think my idea now is to have the long portion of my bookshelves be my TBR or the books that I've already read. Actually, I think the majority of the books that I own I've read. We'll see. We'll see what happens when the piles kind of get stacked up, but depending on what is more, the books I've read or books I haven't, whatever pile's bigger is going to go on the long side of my bookshelves and whatever shorter is going to go on this short side of my bookshelves behind me. I honestly would love to be able to reorganize them again by color, but I'm not sure if that's realistic. I guess we'll kind of see as I take things off of my shelves and kind of see what we're working with. I definitely want my shelves to be both aesthetically pleasing and functional for me, so that's basically my main goal today. There's going to be a lot of time lapses, but I'm going to check in with you as I kind of decide what I'm doing. That's a game plan, let's go ahead and start demolishing the current shelves. Okay, so the organization process is going pretty well, or I guess the organization, taking my books off my shelves process, going pretty good. The only thing that's kind of tripping me up as I am trying to sort through these things is like what books I've already read versus haven't read. <laughs> I obviously know which books that I've already read, but there are some kind of tricky situations where I've read the first book in a series, but I haven't read the subsequent books in that series, which like doesn't seem like that big of a deal, right? But when it comes to video planning and the kinds of things that I like to make, if I am going to endeavor to read, let's say the next four books in a series, like if five book series. I want to go back and read the first one as well. So I'm like, do I want to put that on my TBR shelf? Do I want to put that on my already read shelf? Like obviously I've already read the book, but I'm going to have to reread it for like whatever video I'm going to do so I can read the other books in the series as well. Does that make sense? I feel like it's skewing my numbers a little bit and also slowing me down a little bit as I kind of trek my way through these books. But if you've seen me kind of sit there and pause for a second as I look at a book, that's what I'm doing. Otherwise I feel like things are going pretty smoothly. I am trying to kind of loosely put books in categories based on like color so that maybe I can see if I can attempt to do the color thing, but have a TBR side and a already read side. Also, another thing that's kind of tripping me up is having multiple copies of the same book, which is not something I normally do, but I do have uh, classics. A lot of things are coming up as I'm talk talking to you. I have these sets of classics that I actually have not already read, but I'm putting in my already read category because these are books that I don't necessarily intend to read. I don't consider these my own TBR simply because these are books that I was, I don't want to say gifted or inherited, but these were in Hayden's grandparents' house and I love them. I think they're beautiful. I like how they fill up my shelf 
shelves. These are not books that I like picked out myself and am going to want to read. I don't know who the master of Ballantrae is, but I, I don't really care to know. I'm not going to read this. This is not part of my physical TBR, so it's going to go on my already read kind of shelf. Kind of along that same vein though, as something that is kind of tripping me up is having multiple copies of the same book, like Little Women. I have three copies, one of which is, you know, one of those Reader's Digest classics that I have on my shelves, and then I also have this little cute mini one that I thrifted, and then I also have one of the season editions. Do I need three copies of the same book on my TBR shelf if I'm only going to physically read one of those copies of the book? You know what I mean? So I think my solution is just to put the copy that I intend to read on my TBR shelf, for lack of a better word. I mean, it's going to be multiple shelves, but you get what I'm saying. And then have the other copies on my already read shelf. So oh, that was a lot of talking. I'm going to get back to it. Okay, so I have pulled all of my books off of my shelves for the most part. I do have some books on my far right shelves that I'm keeping in the exact location that they're in. These are series that I am keeping for mostly nostalgia reasons and or they're just like collector's items and I just want them where they are. I don't want to mix them in with the rest of my books. So keeping those there, I also have most of my mass market paperback romances still on my shelves. I'm just going to move them as like one big mass into like a new location. I think I'm going to devote like two, maybe three shelves to my mass market paperbacks for now. And then once I have read all of the ones that I still own, I'll decide what to do from there. But I do think I'll be able to pull off a rainbow again, even though <laughs> my books are going to be in two like separate locations. I think I'll still be able to do it. It does seem like there's a pretty even split between, you know, my own TBR versus my books that I have already read. So I guess we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and time lapse it. We'll do that. And then afterwards, I will kind of show you how I've laid everything out and I can show you exactly what books I haven't read and give you kind of a bookshelf tour. I know so many of y'all have asked for a separate bookshelf tour. I'm not going to do that just simply because I don't want to have to talk through all of my books. Um, but I will give you kind of like a brief overview of all of my shelves afterwards so you can kind of see what the genres I physically own kind of look like. But let's go ahead and get into it.
Okay, so as you probably saw, I finished organizing my bookshelves and I'm really, really happy with the way that they turned out. I feel like the color gradient this time around is even prettier than it was last time. And I feel like my shelves in general just look a lot more full and a lot more complete, which is interesting because I didn't get any more books to put on my shelves for this. I just organized with what I had and I feel like it looks really, really nice. I also ended up putting a lot of my historical romance mass market paperbacks in with the other books on the shelves. And I actually really, really like that. You'll see when I give you the tour that I don't really like when all all of the books are the same height, if that makes sense. Like I like a mix of things. I also don't need the color gradient to be exactly perfect. I don't know. I like it to look a little bit more curated and like messy in a way. So I feel like it turned out pretty good. I do still have one shelf dedicated to historical romances that I got in an eBay mystery box simply because I want to read those all for a video at some point and I don't want to forget what books came in that box. But otherwise, I feel like my shelves look good. Otherwise, I feel like they're organized. I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around and give you guys like a mini tour of everything and show you the books that I have already read versus the books that I need to read. Okay, so this side is the books that I have not read, so I guess my like current TBR, which is just wild to see it like visually displayed like this. I have them all written down in a spreadsheet, and I think it's a little over 200 books. Like visually, it looks like a lot more than 200 books, but this is all 200 or 200 plus of the books that I need to read. I think my goal is once I have completed a book off of this side of my bookshelves, to not put it on the side of the books that I have already read, but instead to place them elsewhere and I can just slowly see this side dwindle and know that I have been finishing the books off of my owned TBR. For some reason I just keep forgetting that word as I'm talking. Owned TBR. Physical TBR. I'm not gonna get into the nitty-gritty of like what's on each individual shelf because again I did this based on color rather than genre or author. I know for a fact there's series in here that are not lumped together. I think the only series that I kept together were my Cassandra Clare books. I've decided that I'm going to reread some of my Cassandra Clare series and not others and that's just kind of like the approach in general that I've taken with my shelves. When it comes to genre I have so many different genres present here. I would say the biggest ones probably would be YA fantasy, adult fantasy, and historical romance. Maybe contemporary and historical romance are tied, but as I'm looking at my shelves I'm seeing a lot less YA contemporary, which is something that I'm personally pretty pleased with, which is a pretty marked difference from the other set of my shelves, which I think is very YA contemporary heavy. Um, those are the ones that I have like read and have enjoyed enough to keep on my shelves, but I don't feel like there's quite as much of that here anymore, which is kind of exciting. Something else that I consider to be kind of exciting is the fact that there are so many series here. I kind of mentioned it a second ago, but I do have a lot of YA fantasy series, specifically that I need to get through. I feel like I've gotten into YA fantasy series in the past and just never finished them. Like I know for a fact I've read like three or four of the Mortal Instruments series but I haven't finished the whole thing and I'm excited to finally finish the series off and like get them off of my physical TBR. I'm also excited to read some of the more random books on my shelves that I kind of forgot that I owned. I know that there's like some thrillers that I was sent a while ago from publishers that I just like forgot that I owned so I'm excited to get to those. Especially it'll be like a nice change because the majority of what's on here is fantasy and romance to have some like thrillers to kind of break it up. But that's pretty much it for this side of things. Uh, my bookshelves this time around, I filled out this last shelf as well, which is interesting for me because I don't typically do that. Um, I usually leave like the bottom shelves empty or the shelves on the perimeter empty because I'm like, no one's going to see that in a video. But this time around, I filled them out. And I actually feel pretty happy with it. I feel like it looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and flip you around and show you the books that I have read. Okay, so these are all of the books that I have read or am not planning to read but own. I feel, again, pretty happy with how this side came out. I think honestly I like the owned TBR side of things a little bit better. I just think it's a little cuter, but I do think this side is pretty nice as well. I feel like this is where the majority of my black books are, and a lot of these are fantasy books. So I'm kind of surprised, I think, at looking at the mix of books that I have on this side versus this side. The genres that I've read versus haven't read, I feel like this side is majority like YA fantasy and YA contemporary, and that's it. <laughs> it kind of makes sense, I guess, given the fact that these books have been with me for quite a while, and these are the books that I, you know, really like enough to keep. So it makes sense that these are some like old favorites and things like that. You know, I do have some Cassandra Clare books over here in this corner. Also, I should mention that there is a corner shelf right here. It's like smack dab in the middle. And on this shelf, I ended up putting more red books. I didn't really know if I would have enough room for my own TBR, but I ended up having enough room. So from this corner shelf onward is all of the books that I've read. Over here, I mostly have my J.R. Ward books. I'm still trying to kind of finish out my collection. I was realizing as I was putting my books back 
stuck on my shelves that I don't have as much of J.R. Ward's backlist as I would like and I don't know if I'll ever get her first two books because they're like out of print but I would like to collect more of them because I have read them and I do really enjoy them. And then under that I do have the Cassandra Clare Infernal Devices series? Is it Infernal Devices? I don't know. It's the two like historical-ish <laughs> series that she's written. I have them right here because I have read them kind of in their entirety. I haven't read the third book in the chain of whatever series because that one hasn't come out yet but I have those here. And then on here is just kind of like a mix of things. We've got a little bit of J.R. Ward. We have the Atlas 6 which I really really enjoyed and then you know some other kind of random stuff in here. And then we move on to just like the great mass of books. Um, again we have a lot of classics throughout here so I feel like it's looking a little bit more full than it really needs to um, but there's just so much fun stuff on here and I just really like the way everything looks. We have one of my favorite Tessa Dare books. This is the first book that she ever published and I don't know that this is in print anymore so I'm really glad to have a copy of it. I also have my season editions of books. I think I briefly mentioned having like multiple copies of some of my favorites or some of my childhood favorites because they're just pretty. I have The Secret Garden. This was one of my favorite movies growing up but I've never read the book the adaptation is based on so I'm glad to have a copy. I'm glad to read it but I do have another copy of this book that's on my actual TBR so I'm putting this one over here but I just love these. I think they're so pretty. I think you can get them on Amazon and there's like a limited amount of printings of them so it feels a little exclusive. Another book that I am stupidly pleased to own is the original Frostbite by Rochelle Mead. We love the ugly covers. We love the close-up faces. Um, I think I have the hard covers of these too but there's just something about these original paperbacks and the fact that they're so yellow. I'm keeping these forever. These were my original copies when I read the series back in the day. Oh and then something that I talked to y'all about a little bit yesterday were the Avon hardcover romances that I have and I just I wanted to show you in person like up close because they're so cute. Um, I just I love that the font choices like I said are different on each one. Like Sarah McLean's book obviously looks so much different than Tessa Dare's book. And I just love owning these. I will say I have unhauled a couple because I bought them without having read them first which in hindsight not a very smart thing to do but I love having these and I would love to have more of the Tessa Dare ones for sure. But um, yeah I love these. These are some of my prized book possessions. But that is it from me and from Nugget when it comes to my bookshelf organization. I will put a couple of clips here at the end of how we constructed these shelves in the first place because I know I'm inevitably going to get some questions about how we got these bookshelves looking the way that they do or how or where I got my bookshelves in general. I will answer that while I insert some delicious b-roll right here of us assembling these. These are Billy bookcases that we ended up putting wood trim pieces on the front of and crown molding on the top. I kind of screwed them into the wall so they have sort of a built-in appearance. I really love the way that they look and it makes organizing my books a dream. It seems like no matter how I organize my books on my shelves, they always end up looking pretty good because Hayden helped me create my vision and my dream for my office space. So um, that is pretty much it from me though. Hopefully that answers all of your questions. If you have any other additional questions about how again we created these bookshelves or if you just have any questions about my book collection in general, leave them down in the comments below. I love y'all so much. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.